Photographing water. How do you choose the right scene and composition? How do you get the best lighting and the best camera settings for your chosen scene? And this is the B&H channel after all, so how do you choose the right gear for your scene as well? We'll talk about all of that and more in beautiful Zion National Park here on the Watchman Trail, so let's get started. Everything starts with preparation. That means having all of your gear packed the day before, making sure that you're going to places when the lighting is just right, that means sunrise or sunset, or when the clouds tend to break and you get those epic dramatic light beams and things of that nature. Now, we're aiming for sunset because that's just when is the best time for us to go here. And so I'm using photo pills to make sure that the sun is going to light up our scene at just the right time. Now I'm walking up and down Watchman Trail right now to try and find the best composition. I'm looking for a good foreground, a good middle ground, and a good background. That's Watchman off in the distance behind me there. A couple of gents climbed it for the very first time in 1973, and it's one of the most iconic and most photographed spots in all of Zion National Park. So we're set out to get it in the background of our image with the Virgin River in the foreground. We just landed on our composition. It's not our final composition because we're gonna experiment a little bit more after this, but this is gonna be our main composition for this sunset photo. We have a beautiful Virgin River in the foreground here with a leading line that goes directly to Watchmen off in the background and some beautiful foliage in the foreground and in the middle ground of the photo. Now let's talk about gear. It is B&H after all, and we all love gear. I'm shooting with the Canon EOS R5. 45 megapixels, this is a beast of a camera, perfect for landscape photography and photography across the board, but especially for capturing epic Zion scenes like this one. For my lens, I'm using an RF 15-35, to which is just a killer lens for landscape photography because you could fit so much of the scene in it, and also you have that versatility and the ability to zoom so that you really can work the scene and get varied shots. Now on the front of the lens, just want to show you this filter that I have here. This is one of my favorite filters. It's a Polar Pro Quartzline CPL and ND filter. It comes in different stops, like three stops, six stops, I think 10 stops as well. This one is six stops, perfect for water shots. So that means that I could slow down my shutter speed, get that silky smooth water. And the CPL part of it means that when I turn the filter, it'll actually remove some of the unwanted reflection on the water and bring out some of the color in the sky, make it a much more vivid landscape photo. I also have a very sturdy tripod here, crucial for landscape photography and photographing water in particular because you wanna make sure that the wind isn't going to shake your photo since we're going to be shooting some long exposures. That might cause unwanted blur and nobody wants that. So make sure you get a nice sturdy tripod. And if you can, try to avoid a bridge like the one that we're on because every time someone even flinches, the whole entire bridge pretty much shakes and the camera will shake. So right when I actuate the shutter, Everything needs to be perfectly still so we could get a very sharp photo. I personally think this is one of the best views in a national park, but let me know in the comments below what your favorite view in a national park is. We would love to hear it. Let's talk about camera settings. Camera settings, of course, is really important when it comes to both landscape photography and photographing water in particular. For aperture, you want to go for an f8 to an f11 to really get most of the scene in focus and also this is the sharpest point of most lenses and my rf 15 to 35 here and f8 is just perfect for shutter speed this is where it's really important when photographing water as the longer your shutter speed the more smooth it looks in your final result right now i'm shooting at a half a second and it gives me just a perfectly smooth result I'm also gonna explore to see how a faster shutter speed will also react. Sometimes you don't always have to do those silky smooth water shots. You can also try to show the motion of the water by going with a faster shutter speed. For ISO, I'm shooting at the lowest so that I can reduce any noise in my final image. It's not a huge problem with modern day cameras, especially this beast of a camera, the EOS R5. However, the scene's already pretty bright, so I don't need to crank up that ISO as it is. I'm also shooting with manual focus. I personally think this is important for many landscape scenes so I could really make sure 
that my landscape is perfectly in focus. And I'm using the magnification function so I can make sure the entire scene is perfectly tack sharp and in focus as I want it to be. For long exposures, it's really important to use a self timer or a shutter release so that you're not hitting the camera in any way, adding unwanted blur in your final result. So make sure to use a two second, five second or greater timer so that you can avoid any unwanted blur or even a shutter release. If you're dealing with a scene that's way too dynamic, and by that I mean the brightest part of the image is too bright in comparison to the darkest part of the image, then you may want to try some bracketing or HDR photography, high dynamic range photography. You could do this by going to the bracketing settings on your camera, maybe you shoot three images with one stop from each other or five images, and you can merge these in post-processing. Landscape photography and photographing water more specifically is all about slowing down the scene and being more intentional about the photos that you're taking. Experimenting with your composition and your settings and just working the scene overall. That's how you walk away with some of the best results. If you have any questions about what we covered in this video, whether it be settings or some of the gear, let us know in the comments below. And I was just looking at my PhotoPills app and I noticed that the Milky Way is perfect for a very similar composition here in Zion. So me and the crazy cameraman, Matt, are gonna stick around to probably 4 a.m. and explore the park a bit. So we'll see you guys in the next video.